How's it going, everybody? It's Proxy, and welcome back to another episode of Castaways. And today, we're going caving. All right, guys, welcome back. So, some of you might say to yourself, where the heck is Proxy right now, and why does this look so good? <laughs> Well, guys, Ty Designs was saying, as a good neighbor, he was saying I needed a chest room for him to snoop in. And so I decided I would do just that for him. And I did on live stream, so I live streamed this, I built a chest room underneath our tribe leader house. So let's go upstairs and I'll show you how it looks really quickly because today we are going to be doing a Q&A caving episode. So let's get down. Boop, 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 boop. So this this crafting bench needs to go. I need to take it with me anyways during the caving so we don't have to waste wood on one. But this is our little humble abode and that's actually water that goes outside surprisingly underneath the hut. So there's a little hole up there. I, I didn't even have to dig that myself. So you have a cute little waterfall here, and of course, you know, the vines. It's It's got to stay nice and... I gotta fix that. That's weird. Tribally. Or, well, cast away and overgrown. But as you come down, there's a few bits of wheat, and then there's some potted plants, and I've mixed in some mossy stone and cracked to kind of give it some pizzazz and stairs do you see the stairs guys i actually freaking use stairs to help this out and i think it looks fantastic you guys will have to let me know what you think but this is the little cave room and if you can notice behind these fences it's nothing but cracked brick my puppy started barking it's nothing but cracked brick and mossy stone behind here so it's like the fences are kind of used as the supports of the cave here so we have them going up into the ceiling and then there's lighting throughout the cave so no torches it's all uh what are these redstone lamps behind fences and again we have our crazy like upstairs in our houses we have our crazy weird fence things but i really like the way it looks it's it's really different and i don't see it often i guess like this kind of using fence as supports for different things and then we have some like little ponds here and in the water I did have stone at first but I have some crafting benches hidden and some fur some furnaces some fur dye hidden so down in the description of this video I'm going to have my twitch channel that way you guys can sub or not subscribe you guys can follow it so that you can know every time that I'm streaming so you guys can watch but today we're going to be doing some exploration in these mines. And I'm pretty sure there's a baby spider spawner one floor up. Because every time I'm down here, it's so freaking loud. But another thing is, I've been clearing out some stone and trying to get some, not mines, like ores. Like as you can see, I've been leaving the ores and whatnot. But I've been trying to get some stone for some projects. I've been grabbing coal let's just say i've been grabbing lots and lots and lots of coal so i'm excited for you guys to see that but i'm gonna take a break get ready and then i will see you guys back down in the cave so before we get started i did want to show you guys and there's a better way i think i remember how or something that i left for cthulhu i wanted to kind of record it to show you guys he has been in the need for coal a build that he is planning to do at some point needs lots of coal and I can't remember a hundred percent what it is but I left a little chest here in if you guys watch his videos this is gonna be a really cool like farm that looks I think it's very Greekish like Greek mythology type with all like the pillars and stuff I'm not a hundred percent sure but so I said I heard you were needing coal well, here is only half of it. Enjoy proxy. And so it's about five stacks that are here. And I left that there for him. And the rest will be there soon. All right, guys, let's get this episode started. 
I did explore just down this way, seeing if there was some more coal, but, and that's when I heard like what I think is baby spiders. <laughs> I'm so nervous. But we have some stuff on us and I'm going to, okay, so I can't, I don't need to block that off. We're pretty low right now, so I wouldn't be surprised if we got low enough to get diamonds. But if we don't, that's, that's fine. I'll just cry a little bit inside. What the heck, Torch? So I guess we could get to our first question and it's actually from Ty Designs. And he asked this via the Reddit. So I thought, you know what? I would take both from the Reddit and from people asking on Twitter. Because I asked originally for you guys to hashtag AskProxy and ask your questions. Ask, ask, ask. <laughs> I keep saying that word. But Ty asks, how do you find being a female in what is perceived to be a heavily male-dominated industry? What are some of the benefits and what are some of the negatives? That's a really good question. So how do I feel about it? Or how do I find? You know what? It's not that bad when you have friends who just consider you another gamer. What really gets annoying or what makes me upset is when people are like, OMG, grill, grill gamer. And it's like some people are like, oh, it's a grill. And it's like, yeah, they say it in, you know, good heart and stuff. But then there's people who are like, it's a grill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like really creepily. And that's that's not how I want it to be. Like, dude, I'm just another person who wants to play video games. There's there's no need to be all weird like it would just be like your sister who plays video games just treat it like that no we no need to be freaky but that's just kind of my opinion on it however um one of the positives would be i've noticed there aren't a lot of pro female players within certain video games not even just pro but ones who play serious because as we all know there are definitely a lot of females who play video games very differently and i'm not knocking the way anyone plays games because you know what we all play it differently and you do you boo boo but there are definitely a lot of different styles of gameplay and a lot are just for fun for some females especially some streamers so I find females who play the game to be serious. You know, when I play Daisy, I'm there to play Daisy. I'm there to kick butt, and I'm there to prove that I'm good at the game. So a lot of people come and watch for that aspect, and they really enjoy it, which is different to them. So a lot of people like it more. And I guess it's more pub publicity, I guess, would be because... I'm trying hard and I'm I'm not being the stereotypical female everyone expects and same with those other girls who are doing it. One of the negatives is because there is such a stereotype for females playing video games that sometimes even when you are trying to be serious people don't take you serious and come in and are just really rude and there's definitely baby spiders upstairs ain't nobody got time for that so sometimes it can get a little disheartening when you're trying hard and then people just kind of come in and they're like what's up bb like asl or dim boobies can i see them and stuff and it's like whoa no dude like go the heck away if that's what you're gonna be wanting here i'm giving you actual content not the boobies and that's fine. If people want to do the boobies, like that's that's totally their choice. But I, I ain't into showing the boobies. <laughs> All right. So the next question comes from Will Boardman. And he asks, why aren't you bald like this naked man? And he sent me a picture of what seems to be a naked man at a, at a beach. But he's covered in like algae or something. I don't know. I, I like having hair. It's kind of normal. Kind of normal to have hair, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I'm not balding, so I don't need to go bald yet. <laughs> I don't want to be bald. I like having hair. If you guys see hear a lot of background noise, I am really sorry. There's a lot of people. It's a beautiful day out here. 
I'm spending it playing video games like a normal person would, and then there's weirdos outside, like, actually doing housework. <laughs> so if you hear, like, lawnmowers and stuff, excuse them. But the next question comes from Middle West. So what are your five-year goals for YouTube? That's a long time, dude. That's like forever's away. But I would like to still be doing YouTube and I would like to be enjoying still doing it. So whether that means I'm doing it full time or if it means that I'm just, you know, playing it or doing what I'm doing now and just doing it as a kind of let me have fun while I do that kind of thing. It's not like a serious job right now. It's just something I do as a hobby and in five years, if I've still not become a, in quotations, big YouTuber, I still want to play and have fun, you know? I still want to do it as a hobby, as long as I have time. So that's definitely one thing. That's a big old ravine right there. Right there, right there. Let's grab some gold. Oh, no, no, no. Bad mistakes. Mistakes were made. Uh, let's block you up. Mistakes were made. That gold could have been mine. This is actually a lot bigger than I expected this ravine to be. Okay, don't touch me. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Whew. This is like... We're gonna block that up so no one comes down and greets us. The ba Oh, I should have brought a freaking water bucket. That would have been so smart of me. Okay, let's continue this way. I'm really scared going mining, guys. It always scares me. Oh, God. Wrong pick. It does definitely scare me, mining. It's definitely one of those thrills that I never lose from Minecraft. Let's go around the edge, see what we can find. Any diamonds? Ooh, zombies. <laughs> So the next question comes from Dark Blue and White. Do you watch the NHL? And if you do, what's your favorite team? So I don't actually watch the NHL, to be honest. I know I'm Canadian and it's something that, you know, Canadians are supposed to do. <laughs> it's like a born thing. I don't know. We're weird. Everyone watches freaking hockey. But my favorite team is the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're like the underdogs, man. I can't help but love them. There's just something about them always losing and being made fun of that I love. <laughs> so they're my favorite team. <laughs> I can't help it, guys. I just, they're, they're, they can do it. I believe in them. They will one day get a, uh, the cup, I believe. You believe and it can happen. And that's what I'm gonna do. I will believe in them for as long as it takes. It's like CLG with Le League of Legends. They'll win worlds one of these days, but they just have to stop tilting. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, I do play League of Legends, and I love the game. So, ooh, protection three, what the heck, yes, give me that. All right, the next, okay, the next few questions are actually from Ty Design's wife. So Ty's wife, and the first one she asks, I think she asks a couple in each post, which is perfectly fine, just so you guys know, in next time like in future yes future ass proxies or caving episodes or whatever we do you guys feel free to ask more than one question don't feel like you can't ask more than one the more the merrier means i can answer more for you guys and have longer videos so her first one is do you sleep with your closet doors open or closed and what and what or what side <laughs> okay what side of the bed do you sleep on? That's a really good question. I have two walk-in closets. One I have converted to a shelf storage room area, and the other which is, you know, for clothing and stuff. So they're pretty big, but they don't have doors. So they're just like open concept, kind of like in the wall thing. I don't know how to explain it other than that. But yeah, they don't have doors, so 
they just stay open. However, if they had doors, I would totally close them, but I'm so used to them being open now that it doesn't really bother me. I guess I don't get freaked out as much as I did when I was a kid. Like when I lived in my old house, I at some points would have to sleep. <laughs> Is this a someone's mind shaft, those jerks. Good thing they didn't explore this. Yeah, sometimes when I was younger, I would sleep with an umbrella on my bed because I was too afraid of <laughs> what would come out of my closet even though my door was closed. I'm a really, I'm terrified of the dark, guys. I have a huge phobia of the dark. So, oh, no, 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 no. Baby Piter spawner. Creeper, creeper. Fine, whatever, you nerd, go away. Get to the spawner, get to the spawner. Light, light, light. Ooh, take it out. Okay, looks like two spawned. <laughs> oh, you little baby. You little baby. Oh God, that was close. I thought he was gonna touch my butt. Wow, he really got me guys, he. He messed my face up real hard. I'm gonna go down to half a heart, aren't I? <sighs> Got to stay here and regen, darn it. Oh my god! <gasps> oh, I just had a heart attack. <gasps> I thought that was lava. Oh man, oh god. That was silly. Holy crap, guys. When I, when I get scared, I get really lightheaded. <laughs> Because I don't know, maybe I, I like stop breathing or I take too deep of a breath, and it always gets me lightheaded for some reason. It's really weird. It's like a ru a, dr blah, 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 blah. a rush of adrenaline happens and causes me to uh, get really panicky. <laughs> I am missing coal everywhere. I have to stop and mine this stuff. Okay, so the next question that comes from Ty's wife or wifey would be. Which kind of Kinecraft video game conference would be the first choice to attend? PAX East, South Prime, Minecon, etc. Oh man, I think probably Minecon so that I could not only meet you guys, but so I could see Cthulhu. That is one person, like, me and him have been had plans to try to meet each other and, you know, Sometimes as a student, it's a little bit hard to get the funds to go see him, but I know we are going to hopefully next year do some form of meetup between each other. Maybe I think I'm going to stay at his place for a few days, possibly, and whatnot. So definitely Minecon, but at, oh, there's diamonds. After Minecon, mm, probably like a PAX East. I think that's another big one that people like to go to. And I think that happens in like New York or something. I don't know where I've, I don't know where these conventions are held. So East would be easy for me because it'd be cheaper because I live on the East. Again, I would probably only go if Cthulhu. Holy iron mine or vein. What the heck? But yeah, so anywhere Cthulhu's going, I'm pretty much going to have to go as well <laughs> that's just it's inevitable guys Cthulhu and oh shoot Cthulhu and I are attached by the hip and that's that's it I I that's it he's my he's like my brother guys I can't I love him too much I can't just leave him we're going to do things together I promise <laughs> okay so the next question that comes from wifey is what is your biggest oh god jeebus what is your biggest pet peeve and do you take the complimentary shampoo, conditioner, lotion bottles from hotels? My biggest pet peeve is eating habits. So people who have poor eating habits, like chewing with your mouth open or scraping your fork and knife off plates or, oh God, there's, does anything with eating habits, I can't stand. Like it's not even a pet peeve, it's, it's so bad that I have to ask people to stop what they're doing. Like, my boyfriend has some of the worst eating habits I know of by the fact of just not paying attention to with his mouth open or, oh God, like his 
forks and knives scraping off of the plate and whatnot. And he doesn't even like hold a fork and knife properly. Like when I get steak, I will try to cut it up for him so I don't have to deal with him holding it weird. There's been times he has literally bent my forks. We were up to my sister's and she has stainless steel knives and forks and he managed to bend them because of the way he eats and cuts up things. And I'm like, oh my God, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but it's just the way, it's just the way it is. Like he doesn't, I, I try to show him and he just doesn't pay attention and whatever. But I, I try to, I can't, there's like, I can't eat at the dinner table with my family. I, for as long as I can remember, I have been eating up in my own room at my computer desk because I cannot stand eating next to my family because of some of the eating habits they do where like they're eating and they're like, kick, 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 or they'll gulp where it's like, and it's like, what the hell are these sounds you're making? Like, how does that even come out of a human's body while eating? And so it's just one of those things like my kid, guys, my kid is... I feel bad for their poor friends because sometimes I think I piss my friends off because I just get so annoyed easily by eating habits, but I can't help it. It's just it's just the way we are, guys. And my brother is the same way. My brother... Okay, that was dangerous, creeper. It's just the way we grew up because me and my sister, my brother, were always like it. We were pretty hard on each other when it came to eating habits, so it's just something that I kind of grew up with. So now it's it's traveled over and I, I I always get really uppity about eating habits. It's so bad sometimes. But do I take the complimentary soap conditioner and all that from uh, hotels? There's actually, so I have a really long, thick hair. So by the time I'm done showering at a hotel, I usually end up like using it all and never getting to take any home. So... <laughs> But if there was, I totally would. I have honestly taken a shower robe from a hotel before. And it was kind of by mistake and kind of not. <laughs> like, I had been saying I wanted to take it, that I wasn't going to take it, but I took it. So this was younger when I was at a rugby competition and there was a bunch of us in a room. So I was like, what the heck, man, I'll just take it. And then I was like, no, I can't do that. And then I accidentally put it with my laundry and I took it. So I took it. <laughs> it was mine from then on. But yeah, so just eating habits, guys. Ugh. Teach your kids how to eat properly so that um, they don't ever have to deal with someone like me. It's not even like a pet peeve anymore. It's literally like a nervous twitch or an itch. I don't know. It's It's funny, though. Some people, my boyfriend just makes fun of me now. He just humors me. All right, so the next question comes from Fiona, and she asks, do you have any really weird phobias? I.e., I have one about a certain vegetable. I can't even say it. Oh, I wonder what it is. Maybe it's like cauliflower or something. <laughs> but the only thing that I can think of that I have a really weird phobia for would be feet. I absolutely am disgusted by feet i know i have feet but guys it's to the point where i wear socks constantly if i wear flats i will bring socks with me in my pocket or in a book bag so that i can take them and when i take my flats off i can put my socks back on it's ugh, it's really strange like you know how it's a weird thing I've noticed that moms and dads do to newborns is they will like nibble on their disgusting little toes like it's just a baby so it's like they're not gonna be that dirty but I'll watch them like nip oh, my sister nibbled on my niece's toes once or like put them her mouth like them in her mouth or like kiss them once and I nearly threw up guys I I almost threw up like I was just seconds away from puking my guts up because I just I can't stand feet there's this one time when I was younger and my brother put his foot on my neck 
and I had to go take a shower. That's how bad it is. Like I went and took a shower because he had touched me with his foot on my neck. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's considered a weird phobia. It might be kind of a normal one for a lot of people, but I don't know. People tell me I'm weird for how much I hate feet. So I always thought it was a weird phobia to, to have. These caves are disgusting. They're so messy. Hey, he brought me some iron or coal that I missed. And I have to make some more torchies. Get out of here, fleesh. Oh, oh, oh. Kill him. Kill him. So yeah, I just have a weird, a weird thing for feet. I'm just... They're really freaky to me. They just, they look like hands, but on your feet. <laughs> like, I know that makes no sense. Or it makes, that's what feet are technically, is they're just like mutated hands that are on your feet. But it's just, it's disgusting. Like, ugh. Get, get feet away from me. If I didn't have to have feet, I wouldn't. I would just have like little nubs on my, on my legs. Just little nubs. Oh my. Just what the heck? It's so. We are so low, and there's a freaking zombie spawner. Why is there so many creepers in here? There's, ooh, there's literally three creepers. What the heck? Is this? Uh, uh, can I? Can I? Can I reach? Yes. Wow. Oh! Oh! No! 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 Okay, okay, everything is fine. I feel okay. I'm not okay! Okay, okay. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Oh, God. All right. All right. Where, what the heck was that? What the heck is that blackness? Oh, we just, I just need a second, guys. I just need a second to recuperate. Holy three name tags in one chest? Yes, please. Oh, bucket for water. No, buckets. Good, good. That was a little terrifying. <laughs> I got a little scared just then. Stupid zombies. Get away from me, you freaks. Oh, I keep doing that. Stop it. But yeah, so feet gross fear I have of some things that are really freaky. So I think there's baby spiders on the other side of this wall. So we're going to go to that side next in just a second once I get some more rails. But I think that might be all for our questions, guys. Let me just check. Ooh, actually, Jolzy Bub asks, I'd like to know what it's like drinking milk straight from the cow i don't know i've never actually drank milk straight from a cow i know this is i think if i remember correctly this is a joke that was going on from the last stream because i said something really weird and it was a mistake <laughs> and so now i'm being punished baby spiders baby spiders Baby, baby spiders? B babies? Where are you? Oh, it's a big spider. Okay, that's fine. Ooh, ooh, I got the skills. This is a humongous mine shaft, guys. This is like a little ridiculous, actually. Oh, hello there. There's def- <laughs> No, 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 don't push her away. Okay, we're fine. See, we got this. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Okay, we're fine. Everything is fine. That is not a torch. Torch, torches. Ah! I meant to do that. That was part of my plan to kill the spider without- It was an indirect kill. So it was, it was part of the plan. Oh my god, more diamonds. We're getting a lot of stuff this time around. Like, I'm very surprised at this mine shaft. I think, is there any more questions? Oh, there are, okay. Uh, I think there might only be one more? Oh no, there's 
two more. Oh no, three more, okay. So another question from Joel is, what? who are your favorite artists and inspiration for art? I have to go figure out his name, just give me a second to answer that question. Okay, I found him. His name is Damien Hurst, and his art is definitely not for the faint of heart. He does a lot of stuff with life and death, and a lot of artists in the art community do not like him because of some of the things he does and how he plays with the dead, I guess is a really good way to describe it. He, oh my god, more diamonds. He takes a lot of, so I'll explain one of his artworks. We got time. In an art museum or in a gallery, he has a huge, probably, I'd say six feet, maybe seven feet by seven feet circle. So like, I don't know what it, what the diameter is, sorry. All I know is it's like six feet tall. And what that thing does is on one of them, he has two, on one of them he has butterflies and the other one he has actual dead flies and they're all dead so they're dead butterflies that he's captured and killed and then there are dead flies that have been captured and killed and he has them just glued or pinned to these wheels and people will come up and look at the wheels together and they'll look at the butterfly one and be like Oh, how a sin like that's it's so sad that such a beautiful creature is dead and pinned to this wheel but then they'll look at the flies and say ew that's disgusting look at this huge wheel of flies like why is this in the museum and it just makes you realize how we perceive things whether they're dead or alive is some things to us human are beautiful and there are things to us that are disgusting when in fact both of those things are beautiful for what they do for us in life. And that's kind of the thing he's trying to portray with his art. And I think a lot of people don't like it. It's beautiful because it just shows us how life goes on after death. And that's a lot of, a lot of his thing is we, there is a life after death. A lot of people are kind of, I don't know, like, uppity about that kind of stuff where they don't want to talk about death they don't want to see it but he puts it there in your face as a type of art so I really respect what he does and he's very well known and I find like he's got some pretty crazy artwork where one is like a skull that he has implanted real teeth into that is covered in I think it's like 12 million dollars worth of diamonds and it's just to show that you know, everyone's like, ew, it's a skull. But then with the diamonds on it, they're like, oh man, that skull is amazing. So, you know, there's, it's, it's all about life and death and what we humans think is beautiful. And it's kind of like materialism too, because where, you know, people think the skull is amazing because it has the diamonds on it. But if it didn't have diamonds and had just the real people teeth, they would be like, that is disgusting. What are you freaking doing? So... <laughs> He's a real cool artist. If you um, want to look him up, I would definitely tell you to. Definitely my favorite artist is Damien Hirsch. Someone I learned about in school. Okay, so the next question is another kind of art-related question. And it's from Mike the Pickle. Or My Michael the Pickle. Mike, Mike, Michael, I think, the Pickle. <laughs> and he asks, I know art has taken up two years of your college time, but when did you avidly start pursuing art? So it was kind of something I started doing in high school. My art teacher told me I was really good at it and I felt like I was good at it. So I started doing it after, like really avidly doing it after high school. But ever since I was a kid, I've been kind of doing artsy stuff like arts and crafts and all that kind of stuff. But I never really started getting hard into it until after high school, I guess. And I'm still not that hard into it like I'm not really avidly pursuing art and that's why I stopped doing art school because I just I can't ever see myself loving it that much that I want to do it as a job so that's why if you guys don't know yet I have decided to change into nursing so it's definitely a big change two years not wasted on art but two years taken up to decide what I really want to do in life so you know, people change degrees all the time and, you know, you need that time to 
I wouldn't have known. I could have done nursing right away and been like, you know what? I think I would have rather done art for the rest of my life. But now that I've done it, I can be like, nope, ain't no Broxy got time for that. She's going to be a nurse. <laughs> so it's kind of like you just got to test the waters a little bit. I'm still pretty young. I'm only 20, 22. So I've got lots of time left to decide what I want to do and who I want to be in life. There's no, t no need to rush it, guys. No need to rush. But this episode has definitely run on long, especially with my Damien Hurst rant and all that jazz. So I'm going to continue going through the cave, see if there's anything I missed, pick up the ores that I've missed, and I will come back to show you guys what we've collected and to say goodbye. Look at that huge lava fall. This place is humongous. So that ravine actually brought me into someone else's mine shaft, and I think this might actually be Putsy's, because I know he was, I think, the only other person who found a mine shaft on the server. So I think we might be close to Putsy's, not home, but I think his mine shaft, or not his mine shaft, his mine, yeah, mine shaft. <laughs> Guys, this is actually a ravine I found while caving yesterday. And I found it again. So I probably could find my way out pretty easy out of this cave. But this is some caving I did yesterday looking for that coal. Huh. Okay, that's pretty awesome. If I remember correctly. Let's see if I can get my way out. I'll let you guys know because I don't want to keep you around. And, uh, look who found a way home. <laughs> God, I am so good at remembering things. I freak my own self out sometimes. All right, guys, let's look at the haul that we got. So I want to mainly look at our coal. Holy crap, we got so much. And now iron, let's see how much we got. One, two, three, four. So, well, three and a little bit. Three and some change. Some redstone. We have one thing of gold, a few, one thing of that, one thing of this, but we also have those. We've got some saddles, some more gold, some name tags, which this is going to be a big thing for next episode, actually. And a awesome protection three book, which I did not expect to find down there. We have our jungle wood that's left over, some yucky stone. I really do not like the new stones, like the andesite and all that jazz. I, I really am not a fan. <laughs> I is no fan. But yeah, guys, I think that is a pretty successful haul for this caving episode. Thank you guys so much for all your questions. But yeah, next episode, I have been running Cthulhu's horse ragged. It's been like running for me like crazy. And this thing is so slow. It's like deathly slow. So for the next episode, what I want to do is to do some horse catching and breeding. So in the comments, if you guys have any tips, tricks, or comments on how I can breed better or what the best type of horse is, please let me know. And maybe even some name suggestions. And I can probably pick one of the names you guys choose for a super amazing horse. But... I'll see you guys in the next episode, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!